I want to welcome all who might be joining in on this study. And if you have a Bible with you, go ahead and turn to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. At Pepper Road, uh, in the adult class, we've been going through the Gospel of Matthew, and it's just been so helpful to take some time to just focus only on the life of Christ, only on His example. And so this week especially, my mind has been stuck on just how much encouragement we can receive from His example. And there's just so much to gain. There's, there's so much to appreciate. There are all kinds of points to be made as you study through the life of Christ. There's so much to be awestruck by. Uh, but for me, one of the most striking things is perhaps that our perfect and caring Lord knows firsthand the struggles that you and I go through. If you're there in Hebrews chapter 4, let's start reading in verse 14. Where it reads, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, not only does he know our struggles, but he understands them. He can sympathize. There's just so much encouragement that should be taken from this point alone. But uh, as we continue, sometimes I think that there's a temptation to look at the perfection of Jesus and think to a degree, well, he didn't really go through what we go through. Or at least, uh, he didn't go through what we go through, at least not to the extent uh, of, of what we go through today. But that's not what it says in verse 15. But I, I do believe that we think this way for a reason. And I think that reason is because it's hard to see someone go through the same things that we've gone through, the things that have brought us to failure, and yet see them go through it steadfastly to God, see them go through it sinlessly, unlike us. I think that's hard. But, but brethren, we can't think so lowly of our Lord. We can't allow ourselves to depreciate what's being taught here. Jesus absolutely went through the same things that we have gone through. The, one of the points we get from this is, is Jesus understands the temptations of anxiety and stress and, and fear of persecution. He has all of, the, all of those temptations were a part of his life. He knows every avenue that temptation can take to get to us. And with all of that, the Hebrew writer still says in chapter 2 and verse 18, Since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. He's been where we are. He's been where we have been. He knows how it feels. And because of that, we can find support in him through the same things, through those same temptations, those same weaknesses. I know that this is a simple point, but let's not overlook its impact. Because we have a Savior who sympathizes with us, we can therefore draw near with confidence, as it says in verse 16. Now, how many of us aren't using this support? How many of us who are currently struggling with chronic anxiety, maybe, or whatever your weakness may be, whatever our own weakness might be, how often do we rely on the encouragement of Christ's shared experiences? I think many Christians would say, being honest, not enough. And how foolish that is. Because it, <laughs> if I want to know how to get through this weakness or this temptation, who better to look to than Jesus? Who not only was tempted with the same things, but got through them perfectly. We need to be sure we don't ignore the benefit of that kind of support from our Lord. We need to be sure that we appreciate the examples that we have of Him. So yes, we do have a compassionate Lord, a, a high priest who can sympathize. But the thing that 
probably touches me the most about all of that is the fact that he would even want to. You know, think about how blessed we are that God would even want to sympathize with our imperfections. Our Lord had to leave heaven and come to this earth, not for his own sake, but for ours. And when he got here, from the very beginning, he was met with difficulties and with hostility, which continued throughout the end of his life. And at the end of his life was an unjustified, unfair, painful cross that he did not deserve, but that we deserved. And yet, even in all of that, he remained perfect. And we come to him after acknowledging that fact. We come to him pitifully, having fallen from comparatively minor things, asking for his sympathy. Just, can you imagine approaching Jesus while he is hanging on the cross because of you? And would you dare ask for his sympathy in that moment? I wouldn't have the courage because we deserve no compassion nor consideration from our Lord. And he, he would be completely justified if he looked at us with nothing more than disdain and smote us for our pitiful determination and feeble faith. But that's not what Jesus does. He doesn't say, just, just get away from me. Instead of looking at us with disgust, he looks at us with nothing but steadfast love and compassion. I can't help but think about Luke's account of the crucifixion when, when the repentant criminal, you remember, looked to Jesus asking for the Lord's re remembrance of him. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answers him in, in chapter 23 of Luke in verse 43 saying, Truly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Can you imagine the relief, the assurance that man must have felt when he heard those words from the Savior while he was on the cross himself? Imagine the relief. Brethren, that feeling of relief should be ours, and it can be ours. And why is that? Because we have a Savior, a high priest, who sympathizes with our weaknesses. Now, as Brother Tom Holly sometimes says when we are in the middle of a, of a study, I may not have read much, but I may have much to ponder. And I think definitely when you come to Hebrews chapter 4, that is the case, especially with these few verses. I hope that you would ponder this wonderful truth that we've been talking about these past few moments. And if you are a Christian and you feel like you don't, you don't have this kind of relief that we were talking about just a second ago, the confidence that is described in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. Maybe what you need is to learn a little bit more about this high priest. Learn more about our Savior. And we can do that. We can study together. Your brethren would love nothing more than to help you uh, in that, to study together and, and to learn more about that. We can all benefit from more study into our Lord uh, in his example. If you're not a Christian but you'd like to become one, or, or you just simply like to study more uh, about the Bible, you'd like to study more about this Jesus, please contact us. Let us know how we can help you. We would love to have a study with you. There's nothing more in this world that we love to do than to talk more about Jesus. I hope that this study has been a help to you, or at the very least, an encouragement. We invite you to come back and join us in our next studies throughout the week, and we hope to see you there. God bless.